So I'm just telling you, because the Lord told me, you know, this is how he works. I can show you where he told the people, he said, you came because you ate from the, the bread that I multiplied. And he said, but if you want some bread, he says, eat my body, drink my blood. And that is filthy, disgusting to a Jewish person because they were told not to do that. He was trying to offend them. And I'm warning you right now, probably what I'm going to preach on tonight might offend some part of you because it's not what you've been taught probably. But here's what the Lord said. Don't stumble over the stumbling stone. Keep pressing. Keep pressing. Because what's going to show up here tonight, and I can promise you, it showed up on Saturday night, is going to be the most glorious thing. But if you're offended and you don't chew meat and spit out bones, you're going to miss it. So all I ask is one thing. Look at what the Word says. You know me. I do not interpret the Bible. Angie says, this is what the Bible says. You know me. I'm going to show you what the Bible says, and I'm going to let you see it for yourself, probably for the very first time on this thing. Because we've been told that we are the stuff on the bottom of the shoe, and I'm here to tell you we are not. Do you know that the devil cannot do anything to us unless he can go through a human to do it? So that tells me he has no power over me. But he needs a human. And so his message has been, you're the stuff on the bottom of the shoe. And he wraps it up with, oh, so we praise Jesus. He's so good. And I do praise Jesus and I love him with all my heart. And I know that I could never be anything without him. But... True humility is realizing where my power comes from because I have power. I'm called to have power. But if you see yourself as the stuff on the bottom of the shoe that's just supposed to praise, you're not going to understand that you, don't ha you have power. Don't be offended tonight. I'm telling you, press. Because we're being called to the fullness. Okay? All right. Thank you, Lord, for this evening. Lord, you told me there were eight people on the ark. You told me Oscar needs seven pillars, which is seven pillars in the Bible, plus one is eight. And we half-heartedly started this, we, we just kind of talked about pushing the service back to eight tonight. Didn't even know what we were doing. But Lord, seven is complete, and eight is a new beginning. And I announce to you, there's a new beginning. There's a new beginning that's coming. But you have to press. It is not going to be handed to you because the world hates Jesus and it is going to hate anybody that it wants to advance his kingdom. So nobody's going to hold your hand and help you go up that mountain. I can't do that. You have to want my Father who is on that mountain. So, Father, I just ask you, give me authority over every evil spirit here tonight. Give me evangelistic authority in the heavens where what I'm saying tonight will ring as truth in our spirits. Mm. I love you, Jesus. Thank you so much for this evening. Amen. Okay, um, I was going to start Exodus right off, but the Lord said, not quite. So this is pre-Exodus. <laughs> I'm very excited to get into Exodus. I'm like, come on, God, I want to talk about the deliverance. I want to do the type of shadows, everything. Is just, that's one of my favorite books. So not yet. You got to build it up. So I just want to show you what he showed me, okay? No, no, no. No, 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 come back. Genesis means the beginning, right? Creation, destruction, restoration. Did you know that part? Destruction, Noah's Ark, all that. But there's also more to it. 
Genesis reveals that there is an untold story about the origins of the earth. In Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, did our God create something beautiful? Do you think that God would create something that's ugly or imperfect? No. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Stop. Now the earth was without form and void. Wait a minute, hold on a second. What's going on here? And we just zip through those words and we don't go, okay, what, what does that mean? But you know me, I'm going to dig. Dig, 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 dig. So there's an untold story. Without form is the word tohu, and it means formlessness, emptiness. Without form. But God created it. It was beautiful. It was a wonderful thing. The earth was formless, tohu. But look what it says in Isaiah 45. Did God create something that was formless or he didn't have a plan for it? No. For thus says the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it. He did not create it in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. So he formed it to be inhabited. Yet it's formless and void, and darkness covers the waters of the deep. In vain, that word is tohu also. Isaiah 45, God did not create the earth formless. Genesis 1, 2, the earth was formless after God created it. So something happened. We've talked about it before. For the new ones, there is a pause between verse 1 and verse 2. I mean, after 2. There's something that happened. Okay? God created the earth with form. Something took place that left the earth formless. Can you see that? Can you see that I'm not interpreting that? Okay. Genesis is not the story of creation. It doesn't begin with creation. It begins with creation in verse 1. But it is not the story of creation. And how we've been told it's a beautiful world that God created and all that. No, it is the story of regeneration of the earth. Go ahead. God's judgment on spiritual forces. We've talked about this. Isaiah is it 14? Yeah, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. Do your homework. Go look at it. You'll see that there was a world that lived on the earth before us. Okay? Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. There was a world that lived on the earth before us. It talks about the garden of, of God. And it talks about precious stones. But the garden of Eden that we know of was vegetation. Didn't have precious stones in it. And, and Lucifer was the one who ruled it. Lucifer didn't rule our garden down here. So what happened? Not stopping there, <laughs> we talked about this. God creates the earth, and then it says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the waters of the deep. When you look up the word waters, the word is ma'am, and that word is urine. So you're going to tell me that God created the earth and then peed on it? <laughs> I'm, I'm just telling you what the Bible says, y'all. Because you can look it up yourself. You can see the Hebrew, and it says urine, waste, semen. So what in the world happened? We know that Noah's flood was the earth's judgment. And Genesis 1 is the story of how God, through judgment, planned to reestablish his kingdom over the earth. And he placed man in the Garden of Eden to do what? To keep it. To work it. To subdue the earth, to fill it, to be fruitful and multiply. The Bible has a parable 
And it talks about the kingdom of God. And it says, as leaven spreads through the dough until the entire dough is leavened.